Hello everyone, today I am going to show you how to set up one of the most powerful tools for network engineers. With this tool, possibilities are endless. The only thing which may discourage people to use it is complex configuration. It is not really that bad, so let's throw peer away together and set up GNS3 for your future killer labs. That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm going to make things super easy for you. Take a look on this list. Pause the video if you need to. In this folder I have prepared files which we will be feeding to GNS3. Most of them are included as a link in the description. I have extracted all the QEMU versions from previous GNS releases. It is going to be helpful if you will import older portable apps to solve compatibility issues. I cannot provide Cisco iOS images, so please do not ask for them. You need to obtain them legal way or G G O O O O G G L A GNS Virtual Machine, a link will be in the description, along with the GNS3 installation. You just need to create an account. These are Linux-based Cisco iOS images, which are perfect for switching. You are going to need create IURC license file. Of course, Gwite will be attached. For demonstration purposes, I have included SolarPath here. If you wish to use your favorite console application, you need to copy it to GNS3 installation folder. If you also wish to play with aggregated links, on this appliance image they are working quite well. I would strongly suggest to prepare all those files in advance, because for the rest of the video I will be picking mostly from this folder. And I will be using VMware Workstation for GNS VM, so let's start with its installation. Once VMware installation is finished, return back to folder where we have prepared our files. You will be able to see that GNS VM is associated with the software and you can simply import it with just double click. Now I am going to assign more RAM to this VM for better performance. I am going to give it 16GB of RAM because I can afford it, but be advised, you have to act according to your PC specification, assign only what you can afford. Now we can proceed forward with GNS3 installation. You can leave GNS3 VM unticked since we have already finished with that step. Damn, go! What you saying? What you saying, huh? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Jeez. Okay, we got GNS3 up and running. Click next and keep the first option. There is no need to change anything here unless you are using this port. Here I am going to match RAM size which I have previously assigned in the VMware. After this GNS3 will call virtual machine start.
Now we are ready to prepare this awesome software to serve us. In general tab I am usually pointing to my projects folder. Other than that, there is no really need to change anything else here. In binary images tab, it is good practice to select a folder where are your iOS images located. In our case, they are on desktop. If you have multiple locations of your images, click Add to insert multiple paths. We will focus a bit more on console applications a little bit later. And I am not using VNC and Spice, so I will skip them. In topology view, I am only adjusting font size, because with many connections, interface labels will get messy. In this tab, it is matter of preference. I don't wish to update my GNS3 often, and I don't want to send anonymous reports and statistics. When you click on server, you will be able to see that we have already set this up. There is no need for change unless you need to. If something goes wrong with initial wizard, you can fix it here. Or, for example, if you will use VirtualBox VM, you can simply set it up by clicking on drop-down list. The rest I am usually leaving default. Just make sure that checkbox enable is ticked. From there you can jump straight directly to adding your first Cisco iOS image. As you see, you have options here. I would recommend to pick GNS3 VM most of the time, simply because the purpose of this VM is to provide friendly environment for your images to run. In next window, click on new image and navigate to folder where you keep prepared files. For 2691, I am selecting this is an Ether switch router. It has integrated 16 port switch module which will provide basic switching functionality like spanning tree or VLANs. Therefore, this router can be used as switch. Right after that, I am setting up disk for the device so I can use it when it is needed in my labs. It will serve as a flash memory. For example, without it, you would lose VLAN configuration after every shutdown, as Cisco device is storing VLAN information in VLAN.io in the flash. Also, pay attention to checkbox below and always leave it empty. NVRAM is memory where Cisco store configuration file in TXT format. And you don't wanna lose it either. All other devices which I'm going to place here will be routers and I'm going to add them in similar fashion.
If you will see idle PC value empty, do not skip it. Click on idle PC finder and let it calculate, otherwise image without it will consume 100% of your CPU. At this point you will have a good idea how to add REST, so let's jump to Unix based images which will provide full switching capabilities. Here you are going to add IOU RC file. Check the description if you still don't have it, you will find it right there. Adding IOU devices is easier, you can follow me. I am using image naming convention, which is helping me to recognize which device I am placing on the board. As you can see, I am adding Azolaya 3 image here just because I want more options to play with. And just like that your switching environment is ready. Because our next step is adding virtual machines, I am going to add pre-installed virtual machines into the virtual box, so GNS3 can see them. If you are interested how to install one of these, I am planning to add supporting video. For now, important thing for you to see is how to set it up. Importing virtual machines into GNS3 is easy. GNS3 should be able to recognize them by reading VirtualBox software. For correct interaction between your virtual PC connected to the GNS3 lab open network settings, set up your adapter as not attached and don't forget to click on cable connected. If you have VMware virtual machines, you can implement them similar way as VirtualBox virtual machines. The only thing which I would not recommend here is to add GNS3 VM, as it is serving for the software itself purposes. For correct settings for VMware PC and your lab interaction I will dedicate another video, as it is a bit more complicated and requiring some networking knowledge. For the most part your GNS3 is almost set, so let me show you one more thing, how to add an appliance. Click on devices icon on the left column. For now keep the first option and click next. And before you expand this list, don't forget to click on update from online registry. I have expanded only switches, but look how many options you have here. You will be able to test almost anything, but for now I am going for appliance which I have already prepared and which is able to do aggregated links. At this point all you need to do is feed missing files into the GNS3. Simply click import and select matching file. 
In our case, all files are prepared in a GNS3 folder, so I am picking from there. That's it, your appliance is ready to install. For one more example, I am going to show you how to implement appliance if you did not prepare file in advance, and with slightly different concept. In this case, you will be downloading two files. In this example, I have decided to show you how to add FortiGate firewall appliance. As you can see, this appliance requiring two files to be downloaded. So let's go for our first one. It is simple as clicking download in the bottom left corner. Once your file is downloaded, point GNS3 into the correct location. Now let's go for a FortiGate image itself. You need to have account on support.fortiner.com, so login or register. Once you are there, click on the download tab. And select the correct version according to your appliance. In our case it is going to be 724. Be careful here and select exact file format which I am going to show you in video. Double check one more time. Yes, this is the match, the only difference is that it is archived in the zip format. Once it is downloaded, extract it and rename it so the file match with the GNS3 file format. Now simply click on import. And your appliance is ready to install. By using same methods as I showed you, you can have pretty much almost anything in your lab. Authentication server, Forti Analyzer, just pick one and start testing. You don't see current version of your appliance in the list? No worries, you can create a template for the latest version just like this. Ok, let me show you final adjustments to your GNS3 and that is going to be console application. Sure, you can use default or you can use your own personal favorite. In that case you may have encountered some issues. Console application can be changed in preferences just like this. For demonstration purposes I am going to pick Solar Party. If you are going for Super Party, be aware it does not play well with the Windows 10. Here is the statement of one of the developers on GNS3 forums. Despite that, I must say it is still possible to make it work. The main point is that you need to copy your favorite console application into your GNS3 installation folder. And while I am here, I am going to copy also older QEMU versions as previously mentioned for better compatibility. Then your console application and you are ready to go. Oh 
Okay, I hope this is going to be helpful for you and see you in next video.